he have a spirit or something so where the enemy got exposed. We're going to do something real quick this morning while they're playing. Uh, I'm going to give you guys, if you don't mind, everyone say I'm listening. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to do a Marcus Schumann thing. I'm going to give you about 60 seconds to get up and go find someone you have not spoken with yet. Now don't hug their neck unless they don't mind. Don't shake their hand. But, but, just, just go greet them and, and welcome them. So, come on, let's get up for a moment. We'll find some people. Come on. 60 seconds. I can't understand what you're saying. 
You, you, you're praying for a job or? Yeah. Okay. I need healing of cataracts, arthritis, diabetes. Let's just go the whole day. Come on. Save the believer for a complete overhaul of his body. Diabetes, cataracts, everything else. Yeah. Great. We had an uncle pass away yesterday. Their uncle passed away yesterday. Please remember him. That Continue family. to pray for my son. Uh, According to the doctor, he is COVID-free now, thank goodness, but he's scheduled to go to work tomorrow, and I don't know how he can do it because okay. he's still so weak. But that is uh, uh, Ruth's son, and he has been sick for a couple of months. Yeah. So, and he, he did test positive. Finally. Yeah, but he, he tested negative, so we need to hold him up for a yes, Consistency. Prayer for consistency. Consistency, amen. amen. That's a good prayer request. Georgia, uh, from the ramp, she is uh, battling right now. They uh, several students had the COVID, um, and they got over. But she's having a breathing problem right now. So please hold her up. She's how old? Tina? Twenty, about twenty years old. Alan's uh, 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 sister. She needs an overhaul too. Liver transplant, the whole bit. She needs God to touch her body. Kidneys, everything. So, how many believe God is a God of miracles? Amen. Let's, let's do this real quick. Real quick. I know this is an unusual way to start service, but you know, I was thinking a little while ago, we can start out real slow and build up to someone getting faith built to touch heaven. Or we can just be like a rocket and just shoot on up. Yeah. Man, I, I don't I don't like the slow starts. I just want to just go with Jesus. Yeah. So here's what I want to do. If if you're here, okay, if you're here and you have seen God or been a part of God doing whether it's in the last few weeks or months or years, doing a bona fide, no question about it, miraculous miracle. Now, I'm going to say this. If you come up and you say, well, he healed my cold. I don't want to hear that prayer. That, that I'm sorry. Okay? It's good. I'm glad you got healed. But it's we want some stuff that's like, you know, <coughs> cancer fell off or something. You know, some real miraculous things. You needed a job and you needed money. Like whatever the case is. I want some testimonies real quick to come right now and tell me what God did just briefly. Anyone in here ever had a miracle? Come here. Stand right there. Anybody else? Come stand behind them real quick. This is bona fide. These are big miracles. God stepping in and fixing. Now, why are you doing this? Because I want us to pray, but with faith. Do you hear me? Because we can pray a thousand prayers. But when we, I'm just going to say this. When Jesus walked on the earth and one person got healed, it jacked up the faith for everybody else. Are you hearing me? It really did. And uh, so these, these are some living miracles. This one right here, I won't bring him up here, but he's a raised from the dead miracle right here. Did you hear me? How many of you have ever had a telephone pole fall on top of your head and kill you? Anybody? I didn't think so. Right here. God And God, after that, God restored him. Then God gave him two brand new lungs as well. I mean... He's, he's a walking, living, raised from the dead miracle. For him to be here with us is just pure hand of God. Okay, I'll hold the mic so we don't pass any whatever around.
had a pinched nerve in my hip. It was very painful. I was asking God, please heal my hip, please heal my hip. Finally, a friend prayed for me, and y'all energy ran up and down my leg from my hip to my ankle for 15 minutes. I had no more trouble with a pinched nerve. But years later, in the other hip, I had pain for six months. Don't know why. It wasn't a pinched nerve, it's just pain. And I was at a conference, I got prayer. This time there was no energy, just no more pain. So God does heal today. I want to tell you something. If you look up to that beam in the back, the top one, I fell from there. And I landed between some legs on the scaffolding. And uh, you could, it looked like a cat, in my right arm, a cat coming down the wall where I was trying to grab the sheetrock wall. And I hit the floor and it jammed my back so bad. And I went about three weeks in terrible pain. And I, one Sunday morning, the platform was over here and I said, I can't take it no more. I said, I need somebody else to pray for me. I've been praying for like five times and then I, said, I need more prayer. Help me. And so they laid hands on me and I'm telling you, someone put their hand on my back and while they were praying. I felt my back go, and I said, that was it. And within three days, all the pain was gone. God is good. Go ahead. Hey, y'all going to have to go quick. I'm going to hold it. <laughs> the Lord just prompted me to come and share this. You know, he is a God of miracles. Yeah. He does heal our bodies. But he is also concerned about everything about our lives. No matter how bad something is, he always prevails. He always turns it to our good. When I was going through my divorce, I had no income, I had nothing. My family was in North Carolina, a thousand miles away, and I wanted to go, but my car was pouring water from the radiator. I took it to the radiator specialist, the mechanic, and he said, Miss Ruth, I'm sorry, but you know, you've got to have a new radiator. And he said, there's really nothing I can do to this radiator, it's got holes in it. And I said, well, I don't have any money for a radiator. I drove the car home after he put some water in it. I went out there and I laid hands on the radiator in my car and I prayed over that car. And I drove that car to North Carolina, a thousand miles. I drove it back and I drove that car for two years before I replaced the radiator. <laughs> That's a miracle. Amen. My mother did many things like that when we were younger, watching her lay hands on cars. Brother Ron. Yeah, back in 1974. I was working for the city of Picayune, and a cave fell, in, fell down, and uh, I was buried alive for like seven or eight minutes, and uh, the God, you know, brought me out of it. Well, I never heard that one before. Yeah. Very simple. Uh, growing up, there's many times as a diabetic that uh, I stopped breathing, foam by the mouth, uh, and that's obviously a miracle, but a couple years ago, uh, I had this like really bad pain in my head and it really felt like uh, my head was about to explode and I thought I was going to die and uh, we were praying the whole time we went to the hospital to cut this short uh, they did a spinal tap but before they did the spinal tap I called my grandma and we prayed and when they got back there was nothing wrong with me. Doesn't <laughs> this just lift your faith up? Come on. They had a disease that was so rare it didn't even have a name. There was no cure for it. It was a lifelong thing. And his bone marrow was supposed to fully decay and rot away, and he was never going to walk. Uh, and so they just researched him. Was all they could do. And well, uh, one day my dad did not stop praying, and one day uh, it just started straightening. And my dad is speaking there, preaching to his students uh, in a Bible study on the lawn of Yale. And this little boy runs past him, kicking a soccer ball. And all the students had taken care of us, had babysat us, and they started crying. Dad didn't see it. He was like, why are they crying? Mom grabbed his sleeve and said, did you see it just running by? And it was my twin. Woo! And uh, 2005, we had a phone call at work. My only daughter was on the way to the hospital. And about 15 months later, I got a call. She died. And uh, it hurt me so bad. I, I could not even think straight. I, I cried all the time. I had so badly, and I used to think me for months and months. I was going to psychiatrists, doctors, I was on hand depression. Uh, I was, that close to wanting to kill myself. I, I wanted to die so bad. And I felt Jesus hugging me one day. And no, 
no feeling like that. I'm all the pain went away. All my, I started crying. I, I had joy in my life again. I was able to just be a normal person again and, and have fun and joy. Like, so I got that hug out of the mess. <laughs> Years ago, I, 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 Mandy, my daughter, was on the floor in a church. She had been prayed for and she fell out. She's laying there. And she's rolling around back and forth, shaking and crying crazy. And I'm thinking, what is going on? And when it was done, I asked her, I said, what happened? She said, God hugged me. She said, I never found nothing like that in my life. He literally hugged her. We have a miracle work in God, church. Amen? Okay. Here's what we're going to do. For those of you that are online, I want you to join with us. If you need a miracle in your body today for healing, and you'd like someone to pray with you, I want you to stand up where you're at. Anywhere in the building. Everybody's got to in this building. Okay, we got one, two. Just stand up if you need a healing. Okay? Now, here's what I'm going to ask. We're going to pray over for Brandy and, and Stephanie and some of these other prayer requests. Uh, I'm going to lead the prayer in that. But I'm going to ask some of you that you're, you're plugged in, that have faith to believe for healing, to slip back. And don't lay hands on anyone unless they're okay with that. And be sure that you... Uh, sanitize your hands before you touch them and when you leave, okay? So right now, um, where are we at? Sage needs someone to get with him. Back here, we've got three and one here. Come on, somebody go get with them real quick. If you have faith to believe God's a miracle working God, come on. Right now, come in agreement. Slip through. If you're at home and you're on, you, you have a situation, then what I'm going to ask you to do is get somebody in your family to pray with you right now. And if uh, uh, there's nobody there, then God will to send your Holy Spirit. So all of, just go ahead and start praying for a miracle. Ask them what they need. Excuse me. And we're going to believe God for the miracle of God that happened right now. Marcus, y'all lay hands on Sister Tammy right there for her eyes. She's got an eye issue. She needs healed in Jesus' name. Uh, so remember Sister Tammy. She's got her left eye. has really been bothering her for about a week. Today, we declare 
the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just stand and we speak against the COVID virus. And we say your name is not greater than the matchless name of Jesus. So we call that virus to be canceled in the name of Jesus right now. Lord, we honor you. We thank you that you are a God of miracles. Say that with me real loud. God, you're a God of miracles. Come on, a little bit louder. God, you're a God of miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready to touch heaven, Caleb? We're going to take off. I want you to say this with me right now. Come on, one more time, real loud. God. Almost. God. You are. A God of miracles. Come on, give him a shout of praise.
pray. Let's talk to Marcus. That's to Marcus about it. There are demonic strongholds in lives. Some are called addiction. Some are other things. But we know we're in an intense battle sometimes. I'm not talking about the everyday battle of a Christian. I'm talking about this reoccurring warfare of a whether it's uh, addiction is the best description I can give. And I feel in my heart this morning that, okay, can you do this song again? And I want to do it strong. I believe some demonic spirits assigned against you are going to break off. Okay? Doesn't mean yeah. you don't have to walk it out. Doesn't mean you don't have to pray it out. Doesn't mean you don't have to, you can just chill out. Because you're always going to contend with your flesh. Say that with me. I'm always going to have to deal with my flesh. The Apostle Paul said, I crucify this thing daily. The only way I know how to crucify this is to read the Word of God and yeah. lay it down. Come on. That's where my strength comes from. I believe there's some spiritual assignments that are going to be broken. I literally could see Pastor Marcus when I was over there praying over this. I saw, Sue, I saw like a fist punching, literally punching the demonic assignment from some people this morning. So if you're in a war zone, if you're battling addiction, I don't care what it is, and you have faith enough to believe that God's going to break that thing off today, I'm going to ask you, is there going to get ready to say, I want you to come stand across this front real quick. Anyone at all, you come on quickly, because God's going to do a, 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 a thing in your life today. Just just, just stand, yeah, come on up here, Tony, that with me. In this middle aisle right here. You guys back up just a little bit if you would. If you need to come, there's a few folks coming. You come on. This thing's going to break off. The demonic side of it's going to break off. Did you hear me? The, the demon, the devil side is going to break off. If you're battling an addiction, I don't care what it is. If you're battling anything in your life, the enemy has, has just won't let up. Listen, there are demonic Spirits that are assigned against us. I'm telling you today, if you will have faith, God is going to take his fist and he is going to plow through that thing and it's going to break. The spiritual side is going to break. You still have to deal with your flesh, your thoughts, fill yourself with God's word, but the spiritual side is going to break in Jesus' name. Now church, if you're not up here, your job is to worship and pray. Worship and pray. Worship and pray. And we're going to just come through here. And y'all just come on, come up a little closer. Just like right, this is a perfect right, right there. Perfect, perfect. Susan, y'all come up so we can distinguish these. Right there, right there, straight across. Okay, we're, we're good. Now, now, I hope you can see how many people are up here. So it tells me that I was hearing God. We, we are in a war and some strongholds have got to be broken. Okay? Some strongholds have got to be broken. I'm telling you, I was standing there and I saw the giant fist just bam break that thing. So if you're up here right now, I just want you to close your eyes and listen. And church, we're going to do this song again and we're going to sing this again. Bridget, I need you to help me pray down here. Susan, I need you to help us pray down here. Now, here's what I'm going to ask. Each one of you that are up here, here's the condition of you being set free. Are you ready? Close your eyes. Everyone up here. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. The prayer is going to consist of, forgive me, God, for my sins. The prayer is going to consist of, I forgive others as they have sinned against me. The prayer is going to be, I forgive myself for my failures, my weaknesses, for anything that's come against me. The prayer is going to be, God, I forgive you. Maybe you're angry at God. Bitterness is, and unforgiveness is the number one block to God's mighty hand. I believe we're going to see the power of God break out in this place today in your life. And some assigned spirits are going to break off. And if you believe that, just start telling the Lord right now, God, I'm receiving it. I'm receiving it. Come on. Each of you that are up here in this line, pray this with me. Close your eyes and pray this with me. Jesus, this morning, I repent of my sins. If you're online and this is for you, say this, Jesus, this morning, I repent of my sins. Say this with me if you believe it. 
I forgive my father. I forgive my mother. I forgive that one who hurt me. I release them to you. I won't carry them around any longer. I place them in your hands. I forgive them because you have forgiven me. What they did may not have been right, but I release them to you, God, in Jesus' name. Say this with me, Jesus, today I forgive myself for every failure, every weakness, every time I come before you, God, and I forgive me. I receive the blood that you shed on the cross. I receive your deliverance. I receive your word that set me free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Susan, grab my Bible, please, real quick. As you're standing up here. I just feel this so strong. we, we got to see some stuff broken. Thank you. I'm going to read a scripture to you.
here. Those that were here, was the Spirit of God here? Did somebody get touched last night? Was it a good word last night? Okay, so here's my point. The enemy wants to shut stuff like that down. And the successfulness of ministers in the house. The young man came up to me a few minutes ago and says, I just want to do a fire tunnel. I feel my heart right now. Sage came and said, can I start praying for me? I said, well, Sage, God didn't give me your name to lay hands on people you can support and back everybody. You know, the, these people and the ministers in this house, young and old, are powerful. I told Pastor uh, somebody, I, they, they were up here praying in a circle. I don't know who I told it to. I said, there's a lot of power right there. I think I told Brother Bob that. I said, there's a lot of power right there. The intercessors praying. People being used by God. Ministers ministering. This is powerful. So it's not about a man. It's about a ministry and the house that we serve in. Is you with me? Because this is God's house. My name is not on the deed. So your candle is important. Whether it's a dollar, 50 cents, or a thousand dollars. Does not make a bit of difference. God assigned us all to do our part to supply the need of the whole. Does that make sense to everybody? In the days of, of Moses, God assigned them to give. And what they did was too much. He said, you need to slow down in your giving. I'd love to have that day. Amen? So, I hope I didn't throw too much on you, but I really wanted you to hear that because your part is vital. And I've been, Sister Tammy, I'll tell you, we, we sometimes you will, know, we'll, okay, get ready to pay the bills on Monday or something, and I'll say, what was the offering? And it's like, whoop, it went straight down. Like, wow. Because God hits the symbol at one time. So, if you've been hit by the enemy to steal your money, it rise up against him. Amen. Get him back, as Marvin said. So let's take your offering in hand or put your hand on your checkbook or your wallet or your heart. Father, bless the gift and the giver this morning, Lord, of each one. Thank you, God, for the lives that have been touched, for deliverances that has come. Bless those online, bless those here, and receive our gifts in Jesus' name. We all said, amen. amen. Now remember this, we have the Giveify app. If you're online and you'd like to give, just go to give a five and you can give that way. Some of you here still do that, even though you're here in the house. So, are you, as Pastor Mark said, are you ready to give the offering? Come on, give the Lord a shout as it comes.
we tried to work our nursery and all that stuff out. But it's so good to have you. It's my privilege to have Pastor Marcus Shoemaker. He is my son-in-law, but also um, he is a pastor, loves the Lord, has been ministering to our youth. For those that don't realize, over 20, how many? 20 some years, 22 years. Now, I want you to know something. Go try to find a youth pastor that's lasted that long. They don't exist. When one can, we know it was God. Yes. And we do know him and my daughter Tina have ministered in different capacities. Tina, when she started having all these beautiful babies, she became more of the counselor. Uh, you know, because we told someone yesterday we have 11 grandchildren, and I don't know how many great grandchildren now, but um, there's, a, there's a load of them that keeps the mamas busy and the daddies, but the mamas especially because our family, uh, and I'm proud of them. I, I know I'm just rambling, but forgive me, but I'm proud of the decision that they've made. Um, and here's the decision they both my daughters made a decision with their husbands that we're going to stay at home and take care of our kids and raise these babies up. And the husband said, we will work and provide. And it's it's been struggles at times, but the dividends are paying off. You know, um, when the kids are worshiping the Lord and growing in Jesus and things. So I, I'm, I'm not bragging on them because you, you may have been a mother that had to work and that happens. I'm just saying they made a decision and, you know, Sister Tammy worked for much of our lives, so don't think I'm anti-work for a lady. It's just the way it is. But I just give God praise because they, um, they've done a good job and uh, have ministered. So Tina's job has been to be the one at home that some of the youth or young adults would come over and say, Hey, can I talk? And she'd pour wisdom into them and uh, uh, because she can't be here as much in the ministry side of it. The, the exciting part when Marcus is screaming and they're all excited and the glory is falling and she's at home taking care of babies and ministering to whoever might be ministered to. So, but I'm excited. I hope I didn't give you too much information. If I did, it's too late. Um, but I am proud of them. Can we give them a big hand for the ministry? And I'm going to say this, uh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm going, this went overboard now, but I'm sorry. Maybe my sugar might be higher sometimes. Anyway, um, but I want to appreciate Karen in the back and Nikki that have been with you forever. Am I, is there anybody am I missing that's been long-term, long-term? Who? Kristen, but she's not here today, I don't think. Okay. But Karen and Nikki, can you guys stand up just for a moment? Karen and Nikki. Give them a hand. They have, they have um, thank you guys. I know Marcus's memory is so good and, and, and his organizational skills are so outstanding that he doesn't need anybody. That's all not true. He has, his slate is full. And if it wasn't for ladies like this and others that have ministered and kept him, we have a whole team that makes ministry work. So it's not about the ministers. It's not about me. It's not about him. It's about everybody. And uh, we are so thankful for those of you that have been there and said, hey, here we got this. When they do an event, I think the last one they told you just butt out or something like that. Huh? He's trying to figure out the food and all that. He said, just stop. Go away. Go do what you're going to do. We got it. So we're thankful for that. Can you give him a big hand as he comes and shares the word this morning? Come on, one more, one more shout. Give him this one. Yeah. Shout out. Over there, so 
Uh, not that I want to hear anything said about me, but I had to realign a few things, and the Lord just took me in a different direction on the word this morning, so I'm excited. So I'm like, hey, Pastor, keep talking. I'm right just as fast as you can. So, so you guys are going to kind of get this right off the cuff, if you would. I mean, right, out, right from the throne room, I believe. So I'm excited about that. And uh, honestly, I, I kind of feel funny. I said this last time I spoke, uh, uh, which I was speaking usually the first Sunday of every month. And uh, uh, last time, I didn't know where we were going to land. And so today, I'm kind of in the same boat. I know where we're, I know a general direction, but where we land, we're going to let the Holy Spirit decide that one. So, everybody good? good. Yeah. yeah? You brought your Bible today? You mean brought it? You brought the Word? Got the, got the Bible? Yeah, I'm, I don't, you know, I'm not a fan. I like, I got a Bible out, but I'll be honest with you, I like the pages, you know? And, and as a minister, I like, I'm, maybe I'm old school, I don't know. I like hearing the pages turn when I give a scripture reference, you know, just turning it, you know, anyway. Just the way it is, I guess. I've been doing this for, for a while. But, uh, but you look good today. Yeah, you really do. You look good. See some face I haven't seen in a while. Good to see you guys. Hey, look at somebody and say, hey, you look good today. Yeah. <laughs> well, enough stalling, right? Let's get into the Word of God. If you're ready for the Word of God, let's just do this. We do it every, every sermon. And I think I didn't last time, so if you would, stand with me for just a moment with the Word of God in hand, and let's just go ahead and repeat as we do every week with an with a attitude of faith. This is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. Everything it says I am, I am. Everything it says I can do, I can do. Everything it says I have, I have. When I hide it in my heart, and let it be formed in my mouth. When I speak it in faith. It unleashes the creative power of God that causes me to walk in victory, success, healing, deliverance, and prosperity. I want to say amen. Uh, I, I'm looking at, you know, one of these days we're actually going to uh, take this thing and actually print out everything that we actually say. So some of y'all don't realize that there's like misprints on here, words misspelled. <laughs> it's, all kind of, it's our cheat sheet. And every time I do it, I laugh and go, one of these days we're going to do that. Like like Nikki, one of these days we're actually going to label the light switches, which one's on the left side and the right, because every week we come in here and you have to be here on Tuesday night to see what happens. So, But I, I, am, I am blessed. I get to hang out with some of the craziest fanatical uh, Jesus freaks that you ever want to see every Tuesday night in here. And uh, we have anywhere from 30 to, to almost 50. We've actually had more than 50 a couple of times in here. And they're just passionate, man. It's fun. It is really, really fun. And uh, so uh, anyway, so some of what I've said today, they have heard. And so since they already know some of this, I want to encourage them to give me some extra amens and uh-uhs today. Can I get, get a little help from somebody? Amen. Okay, all right. So just, just pretend it's your first time and you're excited about it, right? Woo! Yeah. Yeah. There's a few verses that they, they have heard. Let's go to Psalms. I know this is, uh, Sage is all fired up now. He's like, he's actually going to preach on a song. Woo! Yeah, see, he's fired up. That's his book, man. Every week he's coming up with a song. You got to, and I love people like that, man. I mean, they just, they absorb the word. The dude's like a spiritual vacuum, man. He's just like taking it all in. So here we go. We're going to read it. Psalm uh, 60, uh, 63. I'm going to read a couple of verses. Actually, it might just, might just stop at one. I don't know. We'll see. It says, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see your power and your glory so as I have seen you in the sanctuary. Anybody seen God's glory in the sanctuary? Say amen. Yeah? So he says, Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus shall I bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. So, a lot of this has to do with worship. It has to do with your worship and your heart and where you're at with the Lord. And some people even wonder about lifting up of hands. This is just one reference of many in here why we do that. Verse 5, my soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Somebody say amen. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches. How many of you lay in bed sometimes and think about how good God is? That's you say amen in the house. So yeah. So this is not a new thing. David was doing this back in the day, right? So we're going to go a couple more and I'm going to be done. Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow 
of your wings will I rejoice. My soul follows hard after you. Somebody say hard after you. Your, your, your right hand upholds me. And I, I'm going, actually, I, I've got to go this last one. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. In other words, he says, I know where I stand and I don't have to worry about what's coming against me. If, you, if that's you in the house, say amen as well. Amen. So, I read this today and can I ask a question? Is this microphone too loud? I feel like it is like got a lot of that going on and it kind of hit my ears. If that's bothering anybody, let us know on that because uh, I don't want you to be distracted. Uh, um, at least that, well, that's actually a little better. Brother Bob, thank you. You must be hearing the same thing. He was like, run over there. So thank you for that. It actually helps me. It may not help y'all, but it helps me. And that'll, that'll be good. Now we'll ease right along and follow the spirit of the Lord. Yes? So, but David is saying here, I will seek you. I will seek you. And he says, I, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs to you. How many of you can say that you're hungry and thirsty for the Lord? If that's you, say amen. amen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6 is one of my favorites. I'm, not, I'm just going to quote it all. It says, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Somebody say, shall be filled. So if we're hungry and we are thirsty, there is a promise from Jesus himself saying, you will be filled. There's no exception to that. There's no, uh, well, if you do this, if you do that right, if you miss it. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I get tired of religion because I think religion, frankly, is just stupid. Amen. And there's a lot of people that think that you've got to be religious to serve Jesus. No, you don't. You've got to love Jesus to serve Jesus. Y'all with me on this? Because there's a lot of religious people out there. And I'll tell you, I've had discussions and conversations and, uh, about religion. And, 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 and to me, that verse speaks beyond that. Because it says, if you are hungry and you're thirsty, you will be filled. King James says, shall. In modern terms, that is, will. Will be filled if you are hungry. If you are hungry and thirsty for the Lord this morning, why don't you right now say that to me? So if you're hungry and thirsty, then we're going to go on a little journey together right here. So if you seek Him, now here's, here's the catch. If you are hungry, most of you don't just sit on the couch and whine unless you're lazy. If you're hungry, you probably go to the kitchen. Amen? You're going to get up off the couch and go in there. Unless somebody's in the kitchen, you're like, can you bring me in on what you're going to ask? You're going to, there's going to be some effort behind going to get some food. How many of you know, I mean, if you just sit there long enough, guess what? You will starve. It's just the way it works. And you don't put some food in. So if you're hungry, and I believe spiritual hunger is the same. We are hungry, therefore there's an action that happens behind our hungry. When you're really, really hungry, and you had enough, some of you are hungry right now, and you're looking for snacks. You're like, hey man, it's like 12, what's up? I need a snack. Bring your snack to church, man. I don't know that. Just slip one. Some of y'all already do. You think I don't see anything. <laughs> you know, why well, don't these uh, animal crackers for the baby? <laughs> anyway, it's okay. it's okay. Hey, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just preaching to the choir, right? We're all doing this thing. Here. Okay, so. But, but here's the question the Lord told me this, and I'm going back into this. It says, do you seek him or just acknowledge him? Come on, I'm going to ask it again. Do you seek him or just acknowledge him? All of us acknowledge him. Every single day, we, we acknowledge the existence of God. We say, oh yeah, I love God. Oh, but are we seeking Him? Are we looking for Him? Are we actually going to the kitchen where the food is? Are we actually going to open the pantry? Are we actually saying, hey, I really need some food, Lord. Are we seeking Him or just acknowledging Him? What's your daily routine? Some of you get up in the mornings. I get up in the mornings. I have my time with the Lord. I sit in the chair there. I've got the scriptures. I don't always get the scriptures out. The only line church. But I do spend some time in prayer. And, and so I, I'm trying to seek him. And my prayer, and you've heard this many times, is I, I, I don't necessarily, I, always, I pray for my wife, of course, because, you know, the Lord knows she needs it. We've got all these kids. But anyhow, so I pray for her. I pray for the pastor. I pray for other things. But, but, but I'm, I'm seeking him in the morning. So, Lord, I, I want to honor you today. I want to know you better today. You follow what I'm saying? So my challenge to us today is let's not just acknowledge his existence. Let's seek him every single day because he gives us that promise. If we are hungry and thirsty, we will be filled. And so I don't know about you, but that excites me a little bit and gets me, gets me stirred up with the idea that, you know what, I want to be hungry. I want to be a man who is hungry for God, hungry for the greater thing. You know why I love hanging out with some of these crazy teenagers? Because they're hungry, man. They are hungry for God. 
And, and if I come in here on a Tuesday night and maybe I'm just not feeling it, so to speak, I get around them and I'm fired up. Why? Because they're hungry. They don't they, they've been hurt, they've heard enough in, in, in their time with me that it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. It's a spiritual thing. I'm gonna explain that in a minute because Jesus explained it. There's something different about the spiritual side of you and the physical side of you. And so we got, as long as we can understand that, doesn't matter how you feel, doesn't matter what's going on in your world and your life, you can still be hungry and still be thirsty and still be a pursuer of the King of Kings. Are you with me? John chapter 7, verse 37 is where we're going now. And this one is one that teenagers have heard a lot lately because it just seems to be something that keeps coming up. Verse 37, this is Jesus talking, says, If any man, I'm going about midway of the verse here, says, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Sound familiar? Yeah? So verse 38, here's where it gets fun. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Somebody say rivers. Yeah. I love what Jesus says here because I, I, I've been in the woods enough times now, I know the difference between a creek and a river. It's a big difference. The river's bigger. A lot more movement going on. And Jesus says rivers, plural. Yes. More than one river flowing in your life. Have you ever thought about that? I'll be honest with you. Up until maybe just a few months ago, it never really clicked that there was actually supposed to be more than one river flowing through my life. And I have prayed this over people. Can I, can I be honest? I walked over and prayed. Lord, let you, your scripture says the rivers of living water will flow. Lord, let the rivers begin to flow. And for some reason, it never clicked. And wait, rivers means more than one. It's amazing. I'm praying scripture in faith and not completely understanding the whole thing. You know how it is. You just kind of get flowing in the scriptures and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. But the Lord began to take me on a little bit of journey. So there's more than one. There's more than one river that should be flowing through our life. Now, I'm going to explain some of these in a moment. And I'm going to tell you, some of us have one river flowing right and maybe one's not flowing quite so well. Y'all with me on that? And we, we're, we're, going to, we're going to go through a discovery together here together, I, I believe. But... I want us to understand something because Jesus said this to Nicodemus. Let's flip back since we're in John. Let's go ahead and go into chapter 3 right quick as Jesus begins to explain to Nicodemus. Verse 3, one of my favorites that I use all the time in explaining the gospel message of Jesus Christ. It says this, Jesus talking, says, Verily, verily. And I love the verily, verily because that means, hey, this is really important. Listen up. I say to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Somebody say, see. And when you look it up and see, it's understanding. It. It's seeing. It. A lot of people don't understand why we do what we do. Why do we gather together in a building, sing a bunch of songs, hear a sermon, and go to the house? Well, first of all, because we're hungry. <laughs> but the obvious thing is we see. We understand. We're on the other side. But he begins to explain to Nicodemus because Nicodemus says, what do you mean being born again? Watch this in verse 5. Very, very, in other words, he said, hey, listen up. I say to you, except you may be born, born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And when he's talking about water, he's talking about baptism. To be baptized is a Jewish tradition. It even goes beyond. It's not just a John the Baptist thing and a Jesus thing. It's actually a Jewish tradition. If you look it up, you'll find this is how they surrendered into their faith. And then being baptized into John was a whole other deal. That's another sermon for another day. But Jesus did it, and I'm, I'm going to follow the way Jesus did it. Watch this. Verse 6, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it lists, and you hear uh, the sound of it, but you cannot tell whether it's coming or whether it goes, and it's, very, uh, and it's every one that is born of the Spirit. So, let's get an understanding together. He is explaining this is a spiritual thing. When I'm talking about hungry today, I'm talking about spiritual hunger. Born again is a spiritual thing. Something goes with this man inside. And what I love about his explanation in this, anybody ever seen the wind? Don't raise your hand because if you did, you'd be lying. You have never once seen the wind in your entire life. You want to know why? Because you cannot see the wind. But you see the effects of the wind. You can't tell. If you walk outside, you'll feel, you feel it. Anybody ever felt the wind? Y'all can raise your hand there for somebody hello. <laughs> You're alive. <laughs> you felt the wind before. Did you know it was coming? Did you anticipate it when you walk outside? I believe we're going to have a north wind today. And you step outside and go, ooh, I was right. Well, you know what? You can guess, but you didn't know. Huh? 
I sit in the woods a lot of times in my tree stand, you know, and I'm up in the air, and I'm just kind of, also the wind will get the blowing. And, 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 and I can, I'll be honest with you, I can, I can know the wind is coming my direction, but only because I see it moving on the trees ahead of me. Yeah. Right? It's not like God taps me on the shoulder. So the point is simply this. In your life, I cannot see you being born again. I cannot see this hunger that's inside of you. I cannot see that. But I want to, and I know the Lord wants to, see the effects of that hunger and that thirst that's inside of you. Are you with me? Because there's something that begins to happen to us when we begin to pursue and not just acknowledge. When we begin to pursue, all of a sudden, when we're coming, uh, people can see, well, there's something different about that person. Their attitude's different. There's a, there's a different approach to life. they got different habits all of a sudden. There's a different mindset. Are y'all with me today? So this is what he's explaining to Nicodemus. He says, hey, don't you understand that this is a spiritual thing? Let's go beyond what you already know. And so as I'm looking in Scripture here, I got excited a while ago because I said, you know, Lord, we understand it's a spiritual thing. We, 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 we get that. But when we talk about rivers of living water, we're also talking about a spiritual river of living water. Amen? Something should be flowing in our life. There should be some movement that goes on. If you've ever been around a river that's active, there's wildlife, there's trees, there's, it, it's, it, it's active. Things are moving, things are happening. And there's an effect that goes on because there's a movement of the river. Are y'all with me? So everybody's with me. We're all on the same page. We're all, all, all together now. So let's do this thing. So we talked about rivers. But I'm going to explain to you where I feel like those rivers are and what they're supposed to be labeled. I'm going to give you that. But first of all, I give you that. I want to tell you something. In John chapter 10, we, 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 10, 10 says this. I came that you would have life more abundantly. Is that what Jesus said? Everybody heard that before? If you heard that, wave at me. Okay, okay. so we've all heard that. So he came to give us more than just life. And when I read a scripture that says, and out of you should flow rivers of living water, and then he tells me, I came to give you life abundantly. I've seen a connection here. I don't know about you, but I see the connection here, and I'm going, wow, okay. This is what he's talking about. There's an abundance. There's a life that's different. There's a life that's flowing. There's, a, there's something that's an extension. What is that extension of? Is that just who we are? Is there just a river? Because he says, out of your belly. So, so we got some secret place in our belly where, where, where are we going to have these rivers? Oh, no. It's a spiritual thing, right? But Jesus uses the belly as a, as a simple example of, hey, this is internal. Understand this is past what you see. Something is beginning to flow inside of you. When, when you accept Jesus Christ into your life and you ask him to come in and be the Lord of your life, you are open to life and life more abundantly and a life that flows with rivers of living water. I don't know about you, but I can't stand dead Christians. Anybody ever seen some of them? Oh yeah, I love people, but when they come, I, 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 we won't, I will say I don't think we have any in here today. Praise Jesus! But we have in the past, and those are the ones like, hey, <laughs> I just, I, you know, why? I, I don't, I just, I, I can't, I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me. Everything I see in Scripture says there's life. Why are we complaining and whining and grumbling? Oh, and the world is falling, and we walk in fear and intimidate. I'm like, wow, no. No, that is not what Jesus said. You are the opposite. What's wrong with your Jesus? Because mine ain't broken, yours is. Oh, that's the way I feel. Y'all with me? Come on, y'all don't know anybody like that. Oh, some of y'all go, well. <laughs> I'm like four or five of y'all. Yeah, kind of do. Yeah. Why? Because I think that we don't understand what the spiritual value of what Jesus is saying. I don't think we understand. When we're hungry and thirsty, I ask all the time, and I pray this over people, Lord, let rivers of living water come forth and flow. But where do those rivers come from? Anybody know? See, Jesus said something in John, John chapter 15. I won't go there, but I, I, I can tell you what he says. He says, abide in me. What does it mean to abide? Stay. 
He says what? He says, I am the true vine. That's what it says in John 15. He says, I am the true vine. My father is the husband. I am the true vine. Stay in me. I'm taking a few words out, but you get the idea. I'm trying to save time without going there. But when I think of a vine, I grew up, uh, I spent a lot of time in, uh, with my grandfather, and whenever time I read the thing vine, I think about watermelons. If I see a watermelon vine, man, they'll like go, I mean, you know, I've been out there, had to pick the watermelons, and, but I've always been fascinated to watch those little things grow, and they just keep going and going, and then there'll be a little piece go off here, and go, and this one will start a watermelon, and then you'll see the little bitty one over here, and, and, and you know what's interesting too, you may not know this, this may come as like a huge revelation, but if you walk over there with your pocket knife or a pair of scissors and you just, one of those little pieces, if you cut that, it dies. Did y'all know that? You probably knew that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Duh. Right? Why do we do that with God? We get saved. We get excited. And then we're like, well, I don't need to be hungry anymore. And we cut off. And then we pretend like we're all the same. And we're in the same. No, you're not. We can see. Remember that whole wind thing we talked about a few moments ago? We see it. We can see. And, and it ain't always spiritual for us to see. Sometimes physically we see. Some of y'all just look a mess. I'm loving you. I ain't being mean. I'm just telling you. Sometimes physically we can look at you guys. Oh, man, but but also spiritually, we can see this thing. We know when you have cut yourself off. I believe the Lord is calling us to remain vigilant in our hunger and our thirst and understand that there's some movement that has to happen inside of us. Because when Jesus said remain, he said stay connected to me. Because when you stay connected, there is a constant growth. Are y'all with me? There's a constant growth. Now, one piece of the vine, for some reason, I never understood this, we'll walk out there. You would think, because on a watermelon vine, one will go to the right. One, now, you can see the main vine. The main vine's a little bit bigger, and it trails out to the end, but then you can see these little outskirts going on. And you might have two that are really side by side, and one only goes about a foot out, and the other one goes a little further. You ever seen that? That's the craziest thing for me. So my point is this. I don't care what rate you're growing at. Or how, I care if you're connected. I uh -huh. care if you're connected because I'll be honest with you. We can see it. Spiritually speaking, we can see it. I mean, it's just like the wind. We can see it. We understand God can see it. And I believe the Lord is calling us out today to look at one another in courage. I'm not trying to be mean to anybody. And I don't want you sitting there going, oh, he's easy. Look at me. No, I'm just telling you. Get, let's get hungry and let's get thirsty of the things of God. I understand we have to be connected. And God wants more for you. He wants you to have that life more abundantly. He wants you to have that life that's flowing with the rivers coming through. Now, what are those rivers and where they come from? That's the last thing I'm going to say in the message today. Galatians. I had a thought, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> I was going on saving it. We'll see. We'll see if the Lord lets me. Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. I had a minister told me one time years ago, and I've never forgotten it, but he told me something. He said, walk in the anointing. Oh, man, I studied that, I looked at it, and, and I never forgot it. I, it's, it's, Pastor probably, that's Howard Hatcher told me that when I was a teenager. Walk in the anointing. Walk in the anointing. What is the anointing? It's the touch of God. Amen. I promise you this. You will never walk in the anointing if you're not walking in the spirit. Amen. You're not walking with a different mindset, connected to God Almighty. Now, some of you may be feeling like, well, I feel like I'm on the bleachers, Pastor. I feel like I'm not, not involved, and I want to be involved. I want to pursue, but I'm not really sure. I'm going to tell you what I believe these rivers are. Because if I think about this, just... I don't know, just off the top of my head. Anybody ever seen a dead person smile? They don't usually smile. Any joy? Any peace? Well, they may be. I don't know. It's hard to say. You can knock and ask, but they're not going to tell you anything. When I start thinking about life, I start realizing what is the opposite of life? I mean, opposite of death, opposite of life. You follow what I'm saying? What is the, think about that from the parallel between that. A heartbeat, obviously. Heartbeats is a good indicator of your life. That would be a good place to start. But let's look a little bit further with what flows in your life. 
Let's look at it right here. 522. 522. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, or patience, says the Scripture, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. I truly believe these are the fruit of the Spirit, and I truly believe when Jesus said, he who believes in me, as Scripture says, out of him will flow rivers of living water. I believe these are the rivers. These are the rivers. Rivers of joy, rivers of peace, rivers of patience, rivers of meekness, temperance. And when I start looking at it, this is, this is walking in the Spirit. Are you with me? Because he just said, if you walk after the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you're walking after the Spirit, this is what it's about. When you're walking after the Spirit, he says here, the Spirit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, or patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against their so no such law. Why? Because you cannot put a law over the Spirit. Are you with me? That's what religion tries to do, and I hate it. Drives me at the wall. It's two totally different things. When it comes to spiritual pursuit of God, when I'm reading this and I'm saying this is the fruit of the Spirit, and there's supposed to be a flowing, because remember what Jesus said? Oh, I'm going to throw a twist at you. <laughs> Some of you made the connection already. Y'all read the scriptures. Jesus ascended in heaven, did he? Yeah. Did he leave? Yeah. Did he leave us alone? not leave us alone. He said, I'm going to leave the comforter, the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you something. You can walk in the Spirit without the Holy Spirit, <laughs> but it's not here. It's not strong. Y'all listening to that? It's time to get off the bench and get in the game. Let the rivers of God begin to flow through you. Find out. Say, Lord, I, I know I'm saved, but I really want this Holy Spirit. I really need those rivers flowing. This is what Jesus said over and over and over again. He talked about the Spirit. He talked about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wasn't a new new creation. The Holy Spirit been around since the creation. If you read Scripture, you'll find that. But even when he told them about the rivers of living water, they, they didn't understand it until later since the Holy Spirit had not been given. That didn't mean it didn't exist. That just mean it wasn't time for him to show up. We now have an opportunity to let the Holy Spirit, the very presence of God, begin to move through us with rivers of living water. Come on now. Rivers of living water. See, when I see somebody who's walking around depressed claiming they're Christian, I'm wondering what's going on with their spirit. Something is wrong with their spirit. Maybe they've not understood that there's a Holy Spirit, that there's a presence of God. When I read about the Holy Spirit, it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Dwells in me. Dwells. You know what it means to dwell? It means to remain. Same as if, uh, uh, John 15. Remain means to what? Stay. I stay. He he stays here, lives here. He was there when the tomb rolled. Think about that. Ah, that gets me excited. Same spirit in me. He's here with me. When I walk over to pray for somebody, it's the same one. There's a flow. Where does the flow come from? The Holy Spirit is an extension of God from the very throne room. Do you understand when he says, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. It's the Holy Spirit. Conductor. He's the conductor of the very streams of God coming from heaven. Are you with me? The throne room of God. That's awesome. And it should be joy. It should be peace. You should be patient, giving, loving. That's who we are. And I know we don't get it right at all of them. Some of us got a little bit, a little bit bigger river on one than the other. Y'all feel me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. What concerns me is when there's no movement in these areas. Every single one of these, not just one. Not just to, you can might, I mean, if I look through here and I'm just trying to have some fun for a minute, I'm like, a lot of these are connected. I, I, I find it very fascinating. I look over here and I'm going, joy and peace, well, you know what? Peace and joy, they, they, you kind of can't have one without the other, more or less, if you think about that, right? Patience, patience, but if you patience, they're all kind of connected, aren't they? And it's interesting. When I, when I look at it and, I, and I'm sitting there going, wow, this is, but, but then also, if I take one of them out, that doesn't make any sense either. I can't, I, I have a hard time swallowing the idea of a Christian not having peace in their life. Do we have moments where we're unrest? Oh, yeah. 
Life happens, let's be honest. Amen. Yeah. Hey, that. We all have those moments. But there should be something inside of your life. I want, I, want to, I want to piggyback on the peace thing. I just want to tell you this. I have preached on peace and things of that for, 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 for a few years. And then my dad passed away. And this was, uh, what is it now, baby? 20, 24 years, right? This month, actually. 20, 20 this month, I think. So a year after T and I got married, I was 21. So, uh, but anyway, when he passed away, uh, it rocked my world. And, and, I mean, you know, my dad was not perfect, not by any stretch of imagination, but he was my hero in a lot of ways. And uh, so when that happened, it, it rocked. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. If, if, if y'all think I like my wife, he really liked my wife. I mean, he was like, dude got mad at me. We broke up for three days, and we were dating, we dated high school for all four and a half years before we got married. We dated all through high school. We broke up for three days, and he said, boy, have you lost your mind? Yeah. You don't let a good thing get away. That's what he told me. I, I'm telling you, I was, I, that's the fact. He said, you don't let a good thing get away. That's the fact. Can I tell you another fun fact, just for fun? My mom and dad, you know, they were going through a split, but they were trying to make it work. They showed up here at church one night, and we, this, when we, this, this building didn't exist. This was parking lot back then. And we were, we were in the game room. That was our sanctuary. And can I tell you that they came that night and, and in the room, and my mom had the audacity to say, so she didn't say it to me. She saw this little brunette walking by, 13 years old. She said, well, I wish Marcus would get with that one there. That's a pretty girl. <laughs> you know what my dad said? Yeah. <laughs> I, I wish he'd be getting with her instead of the one he's with. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I didn't know this until way, way later, right? And I mean, he's like, so several months go by, and I'm rabbit trail, and I realize you're thinking, what does this got to do? You, you want to hear this, right? This is fun. So I, so, so, <laughs> several months go by, and, and I bring her home, and then he's like, and my dad tells me the story. He's like, dude, yeah, I mean, your mom picked that one out. It's like, really? <laughs> really? Really? So, hey, so all you young people out there, listen to your mom and dad. If, if they, they say he's no good, he's probably no good. Whatever, just yeah, yeah. It, it, Oh, preach a little louder for the people in the back, right? That's what you said. Okay, I got. <laughs> so anyway, all right, that was fun. That was just throwing it out there. But when he passed away, uh, get back to my, my point. I, when he passed away, I was at the funeral uh, all the uh, the week the night before, and I was in the room, and of course we we're in the room with the casket there, and I'm I'm looking at at my dad. And I, I was hurt. Anybody had somebody pass? It's usually, yeah, it's, it's tough, all right? I was hurt. I, I, I was kind of lost. I didn't know what to do. A lot of questions. I mean, I just like, you know, and in some ways, I was even I was even frustrated. I can't say that I ever got angry with God because I didn't. I never was. I never blamed God for this, all right? I never, got, I never was one of those guys. But I'm going to be honest with you. If you lose somebody, can I tell you something? It's okay to ask God why. Just do it with an open hand, not an unclenched fist. All right, that'll preach for a sermon another day. I use that in all my all my funerals that I've done, because it's easy to do this and get bitter. I never did that. Never had that experience. But here's why. See, I was saved already, and I was looking at my dad there, and I was still hurt, upset. I still had all of these emotions, and a, and the first time in my life, I experienced. What the Lord refers to in scriptures as the peace that passes under sin. And you know where it came from? It was already there. I was overwhelmed. I was like, wow. I'm okay. I'm okay. And, and that was just the way I was like, God. And it was a revelation in my mind. All of a sudden, did, did I still feel emotion? Yeah. Was I still hurt? Was I still. Yeah, all of still, did I still have questions? Yes, but I had peace that went beyond my ability to understand why this went on. See, my dad never got to meet any of his grandkids. Oh, he would be, he would be a mess, trust me. He was something else. But anyway, that was a character. We got a couple of videos I think maybe of him. You could just come by some nonsense. He's a character. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he's one of those guys, when he was in the room, he, everybody knew he was in the room. So this is the way he was. Larger than life. You know what I'm not, you know what I'm talking about? Y'all know anybody like that? A couple people, man. Some of y'all like, oh yeah, that's me. 
Some of y'all owning it right now. But that flowed from inside of me, and I felt it. Because I was already, I had already gotten saved. I'd been baptized in the Holy Spirit. The power of God had come on me, and I was just open. And can I tell you this? If you're hungry and thirsty, Jesus said, you will be filled. And he says this, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. And then on top of that, he says, guess what? Rivers of living water. There's life even in the midst of death. Even in the midst of tragedy, you can feel his life. You can feel the presence. You can feel the joy. You can feel, and that's hard for people to explain. And I believe that's why Jesus told Nicodemus, unless a man is born again, he cannot see. He cannot understand. They don't understand what makes us tick, why we operate the way we operate. Because even in the midst of a, of a funeral or in the midst of a tragedy, I can still feel that joy inside of me. I can still feel that peace inside of me. I can still feel pain. You, you see what I'm saying? I can still feel it. That doesn't mean I'm perfect. Don't, don't even think that for a minute. Don't even put me on a pedestal. We'll be disappointed. But I know he's flowing and moving. And I want the rivers to get wide. And I want them to flow. Because I know what happens when they flow through me, straight from the phone. It doesn't stop here, does it? That whole river, when you go out and look at a river, it's life. See, when you have a flow, your lives are touched. The surrounding areas around you are affected by you allowing joy, allowing peace, allowing the Holy Spirit to do what He is supposed to do. He's the conductor from the throne room. How about that? Come on. So I'm encouraging my brothers and sisters again. I guess this is where we're landing. I really didn't know where we were landing. <laughs> I think we're landing now. Let's get hungry and understand that spiritual. It's not about the way you feel. Listen, don't come up in this place and say, well, I don't feel anything. Good. You're in a perfect spot. Because you're not supposed to be feeling anything. It's supposed to be in here. That's a spiritual thing. When I praise and worship my God, I do it because same way that David said do I feel like it all the time? No. Do I feel God in the room? No. I can I tell you, I've prayed for people and watched the power of God hit them and not feel anything. But I know in my spirit, there's a stir. There's an understanding. Okay? I've done it. It's been the craziest thing. Walk through here and feel the presence of God hit me physically and spiritually on one person and then nobody else and pray for 10, 15 more people and then get to the next person also and there he is again. I'm like, where were you at? I just prayed for all these people on my own. You know, but that's not what was happening. It's a spiritual thing. I was being compelled by what was already inside of me. And I want to challenge you all. Let's find out what's moving inside of us. Is it the Holy Spirit? If we're pursuing Him, Certainly. But I want to get out of that attitude. I don't want to just tip my hat to God in the mornings. I want to say, I'm coming. I'm coming. Amen? Amen. Let's let it flow in life. I'm excited. I'm excited about what I see in a lot of you. A lot of you are, you do this. You're like nodding. Oh, yeah, whatever. I, I knew that already, Pastor. And I'm good. That's great. I'm excited about where we're headed. I want to pray for you. And if anything I've said today didn't make sense, or if you're not sure, or you because uh, because I'll be honest with you, a message like this is kind of strange sometimes when you're making connections on things and you kind of uh, come talk to me. And if you feel like I'm in error or anything, hey, I'll listen. I'm, I'm okay with that. But I just want to pray over you. Uh, Pastor, you got anything for pray? Uh, Father, I thank you for your word today. I just pray for my family today, each and every one, from the youngest to the oldest. They're my family and they're your family. You love them. Whether they're pursuing you or not, you love them. But I just pray that today that something I've said, something you've directed me to do, has ignited a hunger and a thirst inside of us. The Lord, we will not just acknowledge you, but we will pursue you and understand that, Lord, you want to move through us in our pursuit. My God, I ask for revelation to begin to stir in our hearts. Let the word of God begin to come alive to us right now in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, Father, for deeper and greater understanding as we pursue you so that we can be the men and women of God you've called us to be. Precious Lord, I ask in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord. Somebody say amen. 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 amen.